In this video, I'm going to go over how to use action tags in REDCap. Action tags are very short, simple things you can add when you're defining a field that gives some extra functionality to REDCap. To see a complete list of the action tags available in REDCap, you can go into any field and click on this Learn About Action Tags link underneath the field annotation box. This will pop up a list of all the different action tags currently available in REDCap. The first type of action tag available in REDCap is one that you can use to automatically collect some information for you. For example, at username will automatically collect the username of the person filling in the field. This makes it easier when you're doing reports to sort on who entered that particular piece of information. As you can see, the action tag populates in the field annotation box using at and then the action tag name. Another popular action tag is the today action tag. With this action tag, it will automatically provide the user's current date. It captures the value when the page is initially loaded and it won't be changed when visiting the page at a later time. It is important to note that the date used is derived from the user's current date, as given by their computer. Similarly, you can use the action tag at now to capture the current time when the user initially loaded your form. You can also collect the user's latitude and their longitude. What this will look like in data entry is this. I will have to allow REDCap permission to access my location and all the fields should update. If they don't, you can update them manually. Next, we're going to take a look at the placeholder action tag and at the Hide Button action tag. To use the placeholder action tag, you'll go in to your action tags and scroll down to placeholder. The placeholder action tag is used to provide a short hint of the expected value of a text field, similar to how you might use a field note. It's displayed inside of the field, though, instead of below it. To use the app placeholder, you'll click Add, and then you'll set it equal to a certain value, and you'll place that value in quotation marks. So here I'm creating a placeholder to let people know that the validation for this field is day, month, year, and that's the format they need to enter their date in. You already know that you can have today and now buttons display next to time and date fields. However, there are some fields, like perhaps a date of birth, that you know aren't today. And so you may want to have that button enabled on the project level, but want to hide it for a specific field. You can do that using an action tag as well. In this case, you want the hide button action tag. Let's save this. And then you can see the date of birth field here in this example record. It has no button to hit today, and then it has the gray text inside the text box to prompt you to enter the information in a day-month-year format. Another useful action tag is the password mask. You would use this if you're having a form that's going to be used as a password later on. This is very specific to surveys, where you can set up a password for the participants to enter instead of having them remember the default code that REDCap gives. To add this action tag, you'll simply need to scroll down here to Password Mask and add it. What this will do is it masks the value of the text fields, just as it shows little black dots, so the true value isn't visual on the web page after it's been entered, similar to a lot of the password fields you've used in your life. Next, 
We're going to look at the default action tag and the read-only action tag. At default is probably the single most powerful of the action tags in REDCap. This sets an initial value to the field. For example, if you want the participant's name to be displayed at the top of the record, you can use at default to do that. That way it's an easy verification to make sure you're in the right record when you're doing that entry. Another really popular way to use this is on medication lists. Instead of having to re-enter medications every single time, you can set the medication name and dosage to pipe in whatever the information was the first time around. This can save a lot of time when reviewing medications with a patient. If you're using at default with a checkbox field, you'll be using the label codes and you'll just separate them with a comma. For text fields, you can pipe information into them from different parts of the project. REDCap has a great description here on how to use this action tag and how to set up the syntax. The basics of it though, you'll simply add the action tag, set it equal to a value in quotes, and then you can have information that's hard-coded, or you can pipe in information from elsewhere in the project using standard piping formatting, and the quotes, and that's the information that will show up as a default value in that field. It's not just a suggestion, it is an actual value in the field that you can go back and change if necessary. Another action tag that can be useful is the at read only action tag. Read only does exactly that. It makes a field read only so that people can't change the values. And you'll notice here that there are four different types of read only action tag. You can make something read only all the time, read only only on a form, only on a survey, or only in the app. So if you wanted your data enterers to be able to change this in the form if they were doing it that way, but hard code it for a survey, you would select at read only survey. And then the way that will look in a regular data entry form is to automatically fill out the information here. If I open this as a survey, here you can see that the default value is automatically entered but it's grayed out. I can't click on it. That's the result of the at read only. Finally, we're going to take a look at the at hidden feature. At hidden will hide a field from view. Again, you can range this so that it's hidden on a form, on a survey, on the app, or at all times. Just because it's hidden doesn't mean it doesn't have data. A great use for this feature is if you're collecting a piece of information that you don't necessarily want to be revealed to the person doing data entry. For example, you may not want a participant to see what their score is on a particular inventory. In that case, you'd use the at hidden. Here, I'm going to hide this just in the survey form. Now, when we look at the data entry form, we can see that the field is there and functioning properly. Before I save that, though, let's look at it on the survey form. We'll reload so the changes can take effect. And now the form's disappeared. The survey participant would not be able to see the value of what was calculated here. However, you would have it on the back end. So I submit this, and now if I reload this, leave page without saving the data, it will pull in the information from the survey and I can see the response there. This is a brief overview of the action tags currently available in REDCap. More action tags are being added all the time. We will try to keep you updated when they're added during the biannual user group meetings. However, there are two places you can always check. We try to keep information on them on our REDCap info site. If you visit the REDCap info site and go to Updates and Additional Features, the second set will display all the most commonly used action tags at that time.
Vanderbilt also automatically updates the list anytime they add action tags. So flip through periodically and see if there's information there that could be helpful for you. Action tags are a great feature that can make REDCap a much more versatile data collection instrument for you.